Well, as we continue in this journey of happiness, like I said last week, one of the things I'm looking forward to is a family reunion. Uh, COVID has uh, kind of wreaked havoc on us getting together as a family. Our kids are spread all over Canada. But today, again, uh, my daughter Ashley is going to join me uh, for part of the conversation on finding happiness. And uh, part of that happiness is going to be at the family get-together in uh, a couple weeks. But right now, Ashley, I want to welcome you. It's sure good to see you, even though it's by Zoom. You know I love you. I'm so glad we can chat. And uh, along with being an advocate for mental health, for uh, working with uh, the Bible League of Canada, you're also a registered therapist and counselor. So uh, proud of you. Glad that you can uh, help me and understand me, although I don't think you studied enough about abnormal psychology to uh, really diagnose your old man. So you're let's too. not... What's that? You're too far gone now. No yeah. help. Well, let's not worry about me. Let, let's help all the other people that have need. So I got this bee in my bonnet or a burr in a saddle or there's other expressions, but it's this. My concern coming out of COVID is that we are going to be far more narcissistic than we've ever been before, really self-gazing. Uh, and Jesus said that that's the worst way to be happy. Matter of fact, you won't be happy that way. You need to be reaching out. You need to be serving. Comment up to me on that whole subject. Hmm. No, I, I think you're right. We probably will be so much more self-centered coming out of COVID in particular. Um, just when you even look at the degree of fear that was there and the judgment between, did you follow the rules? Didn't you follow the rules? Some of the ways of being that just were the aftermath of COVID. Um, I, it's it's hard. It, it makes us more inward focused and connecting just to our small little groups as opposed to seeing the value of connecting to the world around us. Well, I've operated out of guilt a lot of times in my life. I've had to wrestle with it. So I get thinking there are certain things I can do. Ride my motorcycle, water ski, go golfing, a lot of different things that will make me happy. And hanging out with kids, you and your sisters. I'm looking forward to that. Is there anything wrong with that? And why shouldn't I just indulge myself uh, completely for the next year to recuperate from COVID? Is that the best yeah. thing to do? There's nothing wrong with enjoying certain things, right? And the activities and the stuff that replenish us and make us feel full, those are, those are good things to be aware of and to know. But there's a difference between that and a lack of willingness to give our time or our energy or focus to anything else other than just what we think we want in the moment. And it actually, what happens is when we don't move beyond ourselves is we can actually find ourselves more depressed, which is one thing. Um, and what you were talking about a little bit, our perspective changes too. We become, our focus is different. You know, and we forget that we're connected to more. Mm -hmm. you no, know, as you're talking about the focus, I'm thinking that for many people, we've been looking down the road to when we get out of COVID. And so we have this list of expectations and we get disappointed, don't we? Because we don't meet those expectations or they don't measure up to what we're hoping for. Is that not true? Oh, absolutely. That's probably one of our, uh, one of our greatest problems, right? We have either unwritten expectations. Sometimes we're not even aware of what we are expecting inside. And then we end up disappointed. It's like, oh, I thought, I'm not saying this, I'm not married, but I officiated a wedding on the weekend and so many people think, oh, as soon as I get married, everything's going to change or it's going to be better. Or, or as soon as I, we have this child or as soon as lockdown's done. Um, and I'm trying not to laugh. I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> but it is true, isn't it? We say, oh, that person's going to complete me. They're going to make me happy. Or that child is just going to be perfect. It's going to sleep eight and a half hours every night, right? And it screams all the time. Yeah. Uh, but we do it inside of ourselves because we build our lives around thinking these things will fulfill us. And, um, and they, just, they just don't. They rob us of our joy and our happiness in life. So Jesus says this, happy or blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This idea of purity, as I've been teaching, is talking about a lifetime living pattern of being right with God. How do I know if I'm right with God uh, as I try to do life and try to get caught up from COVID, as I try to find happiness? Mm -hmm. It's an interesting phrase, right with God. And I think often we hear that and we start to think, 
oh, I better do something to please God or to appease God so that he's, he's okay with me. Um, but the, the truth is it's, it's all already been accomplished for us. That's, I was alluding to this in the last session. We have that in who Jesus is. And so for us, it's recognizing that that needs to be our identity, that that's our root, that that's our ultimate hope. Um, I think that's being right with God to know that it's my fulfillment isn't actually found in all of these other things. I, we chase so many idols and things that are vacant because we're not believing that we, we ultimately have that. You used a word fulfillment and, um, it's a good word to describe as we look for happiness, as we try to measure the impact and the, the worth and value of our life, or even of a particular experience. What would you suggest to someone who comes to your office saying, they wouldn't ask this, I'm looking for fulfillment. They'd probably say, make me happy, tell me what to do. What do you say to somebody in that point? Or maybe there's a question that you have for all of us to ponder today. Wow, that's a that's a big one to leave with. Yeah, I'm I'm looking for f- fulfillment. What do you what do you say to that? Um, the easiest thing would be, well, what are the things that you like? You want to go out and go get them and strive for them. But I don't actually think that's I don't actually think that's the way at all. It's just the simplest thing to say to people. The greatest fulfillment would I f- I ultimately believe fulfillment comes from when we recognize how much actually Jesus loves us, how much he has for us. And that our desires often, our problem is not that they're too big and we can't get them. It's often that our desires are too small. C.S. Lewis always talked about that. He's like, you settle for mud pies when the ocean is waiting for you. And, And that's the key is that we have to look beyond what we think is gonna provide fulfillment for the ultimate fulfillment in life. I mean, that's a great thought. I hadn't thought about it that way as we're often just caught up with what's in front of us rather than saying, God, fill me with your ideas, fill me with your thoughts, what you want. Um, How do we embrace that? How do we embrace that? Well, I think the first is we gotta look at what our desires are and actually see them as, they're not big enough. They're too small. And I think start to ask God to say, what is it? What is it that you want to give to me? Hmm. That's beyond what I can imagine. And often we, the things we're asking for are the things that we've kind of clung to in life, or we we're clenching onto them, believing it, that they're going to give us something. Um, And then they end up eating us alive almost because we are so fixated on those things instead of looking at what's greater. Ashley, that's been so helpful what you've shared with us today. And uh, I know it's going to encourage our listeners and and those that are watching the program today. We're going to call it there for today. And you know, one of the things that would make me happy is when I see you, we're going to get to go ride motorcycle together. I'm looking forward to that. Love you. Uh, Love you too.